welcome to the World Center of Racing as we kick off the 55th year of the ARCA Remax Series with the ARCA 200 at Daytona. The 2007 ARCA season kicked off at Daytona for the Daytona ARCA 200. Coming off an eventful race in 2006, this one was expected to be much of the same. Bobby Gerhardt won the 2005 and 2006 editions, becoming the first back-to-back -back ARCA winner at Daytona, and he was aiming to go for three in a row. 66 cars attempted to make the race, but only 41 would take the green flag. On the pole was none other than Erin Crocker. It was her fourth career pole, and she became the third woman to win the pole at Daytona in the series. The race favorite, Bobby Gerhardt, started alongside her. Frank Kimmel, coming off of his 8th championship and 7th in a row, sat right behind the pair in row 2. Although he was the most decorated driver in the field, he had never conquered the high banks of Daytona. Starting alongside Frank was the lone Canadian in the field, Mario Goslin. Michael McDowell, Justin Allgaier, Timothy Peters, Justin Marks, and Steve Wallace were among the slew of Daytona rookies in the field. Underway with the ARCA 200. Up through the gears. The field did its best Noah's Ark impression as the field stayed mostly side by side for the majority of the first lap. But out of turn four, it was Gerhardt who prevailed to lead the first lap. Billy Venturini caught his car to avoid an early exit. After the first handful of laps, the top half dozen or so cars were single file and started to pull away from the pack. The first major trouble happened on lap 11. He's going to give back to the school. We've got problems. Justin Algar getting around as he was trying to avoid the seven of A.J. Henriksen. Henriksen was running in the third position. We see Dexter Bean in the six, and now the melee taking place behind all of that. There's a 75 right there. Billy Tanner around. There's a lot of damage to A.J. Henriksen's car. That's a team car to Bobby Gerhardt's right there, the Eagle Warranty car. Mario Goslin got into the back of A.J. Henriksen to set off the wreck. Further in the pack, Josh Wise got sent around as he was checking up. The 7 took a huge hit from Greg Barnhart in the 85. Henriksen, who was racing for Billy Gerhardt, was running third whenever he was turned. The 7 car had a wild ride the previous year whenever Shrek flipped over and slid on his roof in the trioval. Anyways, only Henriksen and Barnhart were done for the day after the opening incident. After the restart, the top four were Gerhardt, Kimmel, Goslin, then Crocker. Bobby Gerhardt opens up a couple car length lead. He doesn't want to get too much of a lead because that will allow Frank Kimmel to have some momentum when he when the draft pulls him up to him. Just five laps later, this happened. Brian Silas, as we look over to... Oh, no problems. trouble! There's Stephen Wallace spinning around. Gets caught in the front end. Continues to spin. Looks like Billy Venturini possibly came, came along and clipped him. Steve Wallace lost control of his car, sideswiped the 14 of Michael Falk, and then came down in front of Billy Venturini. This was a nasty wreck. To his credit, Wallace had an issue and realized this, so he started to wave his hand out of the window to alert the other drivers. Falk did a great job to keep his car going straight, and Billy was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Michael Falk was in just his third career start. He finished in the top 10 in both of his previous starts. Although he would continue on in this race with minimal damage, this was the last start of his short ARCA career. Under the yellow, the field came down pit road. Mario Goslin played some strategy and elected to not take any tires. This was quite risky as this was seen as possibly the only stop of the day. Aaron Crocker's pit box position paid off as she narrowly beat Gerhardt off pit road. However, on the restart, it was Mark Mitchell leading the field to green. Mark pitted under the first yellow to get tires and fuel and elected to stay out. He was the only one on an alternative strategy as every single other car came down pit road. On the very next lap, the third caution of the day flew. Michael Falk hit the wall as a big wreck unfolded in front of him. Michael Falk, the 14. Oh, trouble, there's Josh Wise, the 22. More cars involved. They're coming off the racetrack. At the 24 right there, Benny Chastain. There's Justin South right there. Josh Wise got turned in front of a small pack of cars. Benny Chastain and Brian Cons clipped the front of Wise's car and made hard contact to the outside wall. These three, Michael Falk, J.R. Hefner, 
and Brandon Witt all retired from the race as a result of the wreck. Mario led the field on the restart as Bobby Gerhardt made a great move to capture second place. Just five laps later, you guessed it, the caution was out once again. Frank Hill, oh, up the wall, looks like a cut right front tire. Yes, it did. The yeah. 94 of Brad Coleman gets into the wall hard. Yeah, that car just shot straight across the racetrack. Very, very fortunate that nobody else is involved. And Brad Coleman blew a tire in turn four and stayed up against the wall out of the way of the rest of the field. Brad was just 19 years old and he bursted into the Arca scene the previous year in 2006. At age 18, he captured a win and eight top fives in only nine starts in a very competitive field. This was Brad's final ARCA start in his career, but he went to compete in the Nationwide Series instead. However, after just five part-time years in the series and just 57 starts, Brad Coleman was out of NASCAR for good just three years later at the young age of 22. Goslin led on the restart again, but just five laps later, Gerhardt would challenge for the lead. After a commercial break, we see that Mario lost it battling with Gerhardt. Gerhardt was on the outside, and Mario Goslin got loose under him. Trying to avoid Bobby, he just went straight to the outside wall. As everyone was trying to avoid him, Jason Hedleski got turned around. This incident, of course, gave Gerhardt the lead by default, and he'd lead the field back to green. Right there in the three car, third spot. There's David What's Reagan right there, the 39. Oh. Aaron Crocker. Aaron Crocker into the infield. Caution flag is not out yet. Aaron Crocker spun out before she even hit the start finish line, thanks to a checkup in front of her and help from the Hedleski machine. It was lap 62 already at this point, just 18 more laps to decide the winner. Brian Silas brought out the caution for the sixth time on lap 69. Already limping a damaged car, he just lost it in the corner. This would set up a finish with only six laps to go. In the field. He gets the green flag, he'll go up through the gears. Can he do it without making a mistake? We'll find out. Works his way through the trial and has a great restart, but that could come back to haunt him. After the restart, the battle for third position started to heat up with some side-by-side -side racing, but Mark Mitchell and Gerhardt were gapping rest of the field. The field finally got organized, but then this happened. Top five, they've been hanging to this point. Let's see what they got. Oh! We got problems. Damon Lutz comes down a hard hit. The number nine gets spun around. That's Tim Russell into the wall hard. Boy. Damon Lusk was trying to come down. Frank Kimmel was just behind him. I saw that coming, didn't you, Kenny? Well, I didn't see it, but when, I, when you grabbed my arm, I knew something was going on. <laughs> Tim Russell and Damon Lusk made hard contact with the outside wall. Looking back at the replay, Damon was not clear at all and probably did not realize that he was on the top of three wide, clipped Russell, and the pair then hit head on into the wall. There were only four laps to go, so the race went to a red flag immediately to avoid ending the race under caution. At the time, there was not a guaranteed one lap shootout or a green white checkered. The red flag was lifted and it was set up to be a one lap shootout to the finish. Gerhardt would lead, followed by the pair of teammates, Mark Mitchell and Jeremy Clements. David Reagan and Scott Legacy Jr. rounded out the top five. With the reduced horsepower for super speedways, it took nearly one and a half laps to get up to full speed, so anyone outside of the top five would be pretty much a non-factor, unless something crazy happened. Timothy Peters and Frank Kimmel in sixth and seventh place held back to get a run on the top five. Jeremy got Mitchell sideways, but he kept his car straight. This little hiccup sacrificed a lot of time. Gerhardt pulled out a five car length lead. By the exit of turn two, Frank Kimmel had a huge run on the outside. He was racing the same car he won at Talladega with just a few months prior to this event. Would he be able to make something happen? No. The field never got organized and Gerhardt cruised to his fifth Daytona win and his third straight. Daytona was a special place to Gerhardt, and he obviously put a lot of effort into this event every single year. He'd go on to win the race three more times, all in a row from 2010 to 2012. As for Frank Kimmel, he would win his eighth championship in a row in 2007, the ninth of his career. However, Kimmel would never conquer Daytona in his 27-year Arga career. In 80 laps, the race had seven cautions for 46 laps. 57% of the race was run under yellow conditions, with an average green flag run of just over 4 laps. Gerhardt led a race-high 56 laps. 
Garrett Hart solidified his spot in the ARCA record books this race with three straight Daytona wins. And he did it again just a handful of years later. This is probably never going to happen again. Well, anyways guys, that's it for this video. If you want to see more ARCA or NASCAR Wreckfest, let me know in the comments down below. Also, be sure to check out my website in the description down below for even more weekly content. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.